Welcome everyone. In today's video, I just wanted to take a look at Drift. So Drift is a Perpetual Futures DEX on Solana. I've done a review of it before and they've pushed through a lot of product updates and it's looking really, really good now. Dare I say, maybe the best Perpetual Futures DEX in crypto. There's a lot of positives to trading here. It's got a really sleek UI. Uh, they have lots of unique features as well, and they've done a really good job here. Well, the, the Drift team have done a really good job um, actually pushing through these updates. So I've mentioned Drift quite a lot on this channel. You can you know check out some of the videos that I've made before about different trading strategies you could do, just a general review on Drift. And I also did a trading challenge on Drift, which I'll leave a link in the description down below. I took a, a 1K account to like 14K in the space of a couple months. So that was that was pretty cool. Um, but I haven't traded on it a lot since it first shut down, I think May time of 2022. And they redid the exchange in September, October-ish time, and they've been pushing through updates, and I'm really impressed with what's happening on Drift right now. So as I said before, it's a perpetual futures exchange on Solana. You can trade quite a few different markets here. So obviously Solana, Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, Doge, uh, Matic, Aptos, Arb, and Sui. I've not seen very many perpetual futures DEXs actually offer Sui, so it's actually cool that they are. And I think it's maybe the first on Solana. Uh, and then Optimism as well. So they've got a good amount of markets there uh, that you can actually trade on. And I'll just show you how a trade goes. So uh, let me just do $100, long this, press OK. And then we've got to confirm this in the wallet as well. And let's just see how fast this goes. One, two, three, four, five. And there we go. The trade has gone through. And we can see all the information down here. I'm on Sol, uh, $98. This is my uh, entry price and then my PL here. No liquidation price. And then if I just press close, we'll just see how fast this goes. Um, some really cool, like, as I said before, the UI is amazing. Just look at this and then compare it to some of the other Perpetual Futures DEXs out there. Like GMX, for example, has nothing on its UI compared to Drift. Let me just close this position. Okay, and one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And there we go. Um, it's all gone through. And so the unique thing with Drift as well is that you're not only just trading uh, against other people, so you're not PVPing against other people just doing that, you're actually trading against the uh, Drift AMM as well. And so they have that in place so you can actually trade against something and get your like positions filled. So if I go to trades, we can just take a look at what's happening. So when I went long on the sole perp, we can see my counterparty, which is this person. And if I go to my, uh, when I closed the position, when I went short, we can see that part of it was filled by the drift AMM and the other part was filled by uh, that person as well, who I, I'm assuming is a market maker and we can see my fee. And so in terms of fees, Drift is neither expensive or cheap. It's sort of in line with what we see in the industry. So uh, if we take Binance, for example, uh, if you're a regular trader there, you get a 0.1% fee. And that's the same here with Drift. If we go to the fees here, we can see the fee schedule. So if you're a taker, so if you're uh, putting in market orders, you're paying 10 basis points, which is 0.1%. And that slowly goes down depending on how much you have staked in the insurance fund, as well as the volume uh, that you're actually putting through Drift as well. And then if you're a maker, you get a 0.02% fee rebate, which is pretty cool as well. So that's um, if you're putting in limit orders and they get filled. And now onto some other features of Drift. You also have spot trading here. Uh, as well, so you can trade SOL or MSOL in the spot trading, which is pretty cool. So you obviously have the, the option to do perpetuals or spot. And this opens up some really cool um, trading strategies that you can do. Drift is still in its early stages, so I expect these markets to get filled out um, over time, but that's what we have for right now. So you can trade 5X leverage with the spot margin trading and up to 10X leverage with the perpetual futures trading. Now, if we just click here on the Earn tab, this is something that's really cool that Drift has as well. So any collateral that you deposit into Drift, it automatically starts earning yield. So if USDC 
you're not going to be earning much, only 0.09% and 0.44% uh, for Seoul, and for MSOL it's 0.12%. But it earns yield anyway, which is quite nice, um, and I do like that. Now, if we go into this other tab here, insurance fund staking, uh, we can see the insurance fund vault. So if you deposit USDC into this vault, you're getting 43.69% APR, but that does come with its risks. So the insurance fund vault, you can stake your assets into the insurance fund vault and earn a portion of the fees from perp trades, borrows, and liquidations but it's also the protocol's backstop to maintaining the solvency of the protocol. So the insurance fund is used to pay off liabilities when an account is bankrupt. So by default, the insurance fund will pay out any bankruptcy losses. So in full for spot market balances and up to the per market set max insurance limit. So when someone goes bankrupt, you'll have to pay out for that. And if we just go here onto bankruptcies, we can see the most recent bankruptcies that have actually happened. So. Um, so someone got $2,000 in debt on their sole perp and when that happens, money is taken from the insurance account to fund that loss. So there is a risk associated when depositing into these insurance vaults, but if you're familiar with uh, GMX and the staking that they provide there, uh, when you put into the liquidity pools, it's similar to that and that's very popular. Uh, that's got like hundreds of millions of dollars in it. So, um, so I know for a lot of people, it's not a problem, but... If this is something that you're iffy on, then uh, perhaps you don't want to get into this vault. Another downside of it is that any money that is staked into these insurance vaults, they cannot be used as collateral. Uh, additionally, they have a 13-day unstaking cooling down period. So if you want to get your money out of that insurance vault, uh, you have to wait 13 days in order to do so. But saying that, this could be a, a decent place to do some stablecoin yield farming whilst we're in a bear market. Another functionality that Drift has is that you can use it as a money market. So you can deposit uh, different collateral into Drift, so uh, USDC SOL and MSOL, and then you can borrow against that, which is actually pretty cool. Um, I remember Mango Markets doing something similar to that, and so it's really cool that Drift has started to do this as well. So it turns Drift from just a perpetual futures dex into a sort of DeFi super app, which I find is really amazing. To just round off this video, I just wanted to talk about some of the pros and cons of trading on Drift. So the first pro I wanna talk about is the sleek trading user interface. Uh, it's probably the most customizable out of any perpetual futures decks that I've seen so far. Um, so look, there's many different setups you can have here. The fact that you can have multiple charts here is like ridiculous as well. Cause if you think about it, right? Trading view makes you pay for this, <laughs> where it's for free on Drift. Um, so that's awesome. Of course, you've got your, your standard uh, symbols that you can add on, different candlestick bars um, and indicators as well. Uh, but yeah, I find it to be better in terms of customization uh, compared to something like DYDX, where it, it doesn't really have anywhere near as much. Now, another pro of trading on Drift as well is that the fees are on par with what you see in the industry. So it's actually similar to trading on Binance, as I've said before. I know when you have other places, when you're trading on like Arbitrum, for example, it can be a little bit more expensive because you're paying higher gas fees. Whereas here you're trading on Solana, um, fees are under a cent. So it's you know never really a problem. Another feature that I wanted to talk about here, if you go onto settings and then you can change the default slippage tolerance, your RPC endpoint and your priority fees. So if you want a trade to go through faster, uh, you can change the fee amount here as well. And I'm not seeing very many perpetual futures DEXs do, uh, do stuff like this, which I think is pretty cool. And they just make it easy for people to actually get started. Another benefit is that you can download your historical trades here as well, and that makes it easier for you to pay taxes. Additionally, you can create sub accounts here as well, so it's not all confined to one account. So if you just want to fund uh, a, a sub account and then just do extreme amounts of leverage, then you can do so um, and not ruin your main account there and not have to go ahead and use a different wallet in order to, to do that. So it just makes it very easy to trade on Drift. Another benefit is that all deposits immediately earn yield. And also you can use exotic collateral. It's not just USDC, you can use SOL and MSOL. And because you have exotic collateral on Drift, it means that you can easily execute basis trading strategies on Drift. Now onto the cons. Uh, one thing that I will say is that there just isn't a lot of liquidity and volume going through Drift right now. But 
something like that should improve over time. I mean, crypto's in a massive slump right now, so there's not a lot of people trading, not a lot of people um, making markets right now. So that's why it's not super liquid on Drift. I expect this to improve over time, but for right now, if you're trying to move size, you're gonna eat a lot of slippage and this probably isn't the place to go. And the last con of Drift is that the fact that it doesn't offer pair trading. Like this is basically a criticism I have of all perpetual futures DEXs because no one offers it right now. I know there's one protocol called Pair Protocol who have come about purely because no one else is offering it. They're gonna offer like ETH BTC trading and um, say like ADA ETH trading, you know, stuff like that, right? When you're on exchanges like Binance, they offer that, but they don't offer that in most Perpetual Futures DEXs. And it makes sense for right now because there isn't enough volume going through and there wouldn't be enough liquidity for those trading pairs for it to be worth it. Um, so I expect that to change in the future. So the cons of trading on Drift right now aren't really their fault due to like, you know, lack of liquidity and uh, lack of pair trading, but I'd, I'd say that about pretty much every Perpetual Futures DEX out there. So I really recommend going ahead and checking out Drift if you haven't in a while. Um, if you are an avid Solana user, then definitely this should be the number one place to go. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe for more videos like this one.